special to me uh, uh, in in the studio uh, this Saturday. There'll be over thirty five thousand people will be in attendance for the sixth annual broccoli. That's right. You gotta, say that again. I, I want to say. I, I, I didn't say thirteen. I didn't say five. I didn't say thirty five. I said thirty five thousand people <laughs> will be praying much more probably outside the gates. I mean, you know, trying to get in to the to it. We'll be here for the sixth annual Broccoli City Music Festival taking place in Washington D.C. featuring performances by some of the biggest names in hip hop including Cardi B, the Migos and Miguel. Now, for those who don't know, Broccoli City is much more than just a concert. It's a social enterprise that roots itself in a triple bottom line strategy that focuses on people, planet and profit with a mission of making people more active participants in their community. So sharing the common goal of making these communities stronger and empowering young people, um, you know, Hip Hop Caucus and Broccoli City are teaming up to do some great things. We'll get into that. But without further ado, uh, you know, I want to say this brother here who is, you know, I got to say this too, Mustafa. You know, I, I got a lot, of, a lot of folks from Howard on the show. You know what I mean? Uh, I see. We, we, you know, a lot, of, lot, of, lot, good, lot about, of good folks. You know, we had, Gilbert, had Gilbert here from Howard. We, had, we got a lot of good folks. Howard got something. Howard got something in the water, too. Gets good water. I hope, I hope he, we see. <laughs> I don't know. They were protesting a couple weeks ago. We got to fix that up. But we got, we got some good things going on here. But from the Bay, straight out from the Bay, man, my dear brother, yo, Daryl Perkins, the director of Impact and co-founder of Broccoli City is in the studio. Daryl, T. Perk, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. I got me hyped up sitting here listening. <laughs> I'm ready to rock. What are we, what are we doing? Well, well let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Tell us about what is Broccoli I, I little. I give a little background. Tell, tell the folks, what is Broccoli City? And also, what is Broccoli City Fest? Sure. Well, you know, I'll start, I start from the beginning because... Um, Rev and the Hip Hop Caucus was actually there would be no Broccoli City Broccoli City Festival without the Hip Hop Caucus mm. I don't even know if you remember this but when we were doing Green the Block events uh, in 2010 we were doing Earth Day events all around the country yep. and our the flagship one of our flagship events was in Los Angeles um, and it was uh, it was a block party. It's called the Global Cooling, and that's I, right. that was one of ours. And Dom Kennedy headlined, and Kendrick Lamar was on early in the day. Nobody knew who Kendrick was at the time. Mm. Come on but now, that's how I met my Broccoli City partners. Um, and then a couple years in 2012, we started uh, the the festival to celebrate Earth Day to, to gather people. But really, even larger than the festival, which has got gotten out ahead of us and is, is is you know has grown. It's always been about how are we shifting culture towards health and wellness. That's right. How are we shifting culture, making that the cool thing to do? We told we want we on the coolest environmental show That's right, right. Now. Come on Yeah you know I mean So we, how are we looking To really shift that culture um, And so make it cool To be active Make it cool To be engaged Make it sexy To be healthy And really Get folks And so, so it becomes A part of us From a young age It's something That we do You know what I mean like, and, I, and again I, 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 A lot of this To you Rev And, and to the caucus And I, I give you All the credit But it's, it's that same That same vibe That, we, that was in the 60s when, we was at, when people were active And it was cool To be engaged And have a fro Have your fist up It was cool So how do we How we bring that back across the board mm. um so i mean we, we do a lot of work we have the festival we do work throughout the year um in the communities doing doing work i think you've had ronnie on from the green scheme we're going to that's have right coming up yep um but we do a lot of work with them with code green and so doing programs to get environmentalists young by getting their hands dirty i think one of the right. most amazing things when we talk about obviously we look at our communities the issues whether it be hypertension diabetes and, and food related issues um and, and food deserts in particular but we start but also know what food desert is tell them what that is for sure folks that don't have access they don't have access to uh healthy foods so they don't have access to fresh foods it takes you know it might take a mother an hour to get to a good grocery store even if there is a grocery store just the options are trash mm. um so how are we making turning food deserts into food oasis by not only growing our own food but making sure that there is access to healthy good foods but along the same line which direct directly links to the environment is it's crazy when you see when you start growing food so we'll do community gardens in in, in, in these food deserts in the hood and when when a youngin is getting their hands dirty and they're thinking about 
the soil, they're thinking about the water. You almost are organically creating environment environmentalist because they're thinking about it in a in a real in a right. very real way. You thinking of, my water ain't good. I got lead in my soil. I can't so you you thinking about these things, you're thinking about the sun. So it makes you look at things a little bit differently. And then when you're able to then to eat something that you grow, mm. I mean that's powerful. I mean that's powerful for younger, but but you can see that process and it really teaches that process. So I like to title those 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 things together. And then and then and we talk about triple bottom line. So people plan and profit and also that you have a good so whether whether you're trading with you what you grew or whether you're eating it yourself whether you're taking it home to your family it's something that you that you have mm-hmm. and so just how we spreading this out man we gotta get this out and get you know get folks active man i love it i love it i love it you know we we probably got a lot of youngins who's listening to the show as well along with others who are well, hold on hold on but you said youngin i said youngin <laughs> I've been in GC for a while now. <laughs> Come on now. I like it. This is <laughs> Right. And everybody know I'm repping Ward 7 and Ward 8. For y'all who don't know what's up, it's for West Virginia, y'all. So it's, that's a big moment right here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But, yo, um, so, Daryl, I- I'm just interested, you know, in getting Broccoli City started in the beginning. Can you talk a little bit for folks about what went into that? And, and you know, because there may be others who are thinking about, you know, I'd like to do something similar someday. For sure. Um I mean, we we my partners and I we'd had uh, I mean experience doing events. I mean, I'd done bus tours with the caucus, done respect my vote, um, gather large amounts of people. Um, so and we had some experience doing that. Um, but we just again we wanted to get people active around Earth Day, getting them active, thinking about the environment. Mm-hmm. And so our first year we did it. We had about um, about twenty five hundred three thousand people. Uh, yeah, about twenty think between twenty five hundred three thousand people was over by uh, the Nat Stadium at Half Street Fairgrounds. And I remember, you know. That first day, like, damn, how are we gonna pack this space out, you know? And and uh, to be six years later and have thirty thousand people is, you know, I'm, it's it's humbling for sure. Um, but in terms of the process, it was when I think it was we've been good just being able to identify talent um, in terms of folks that are going to gather people. So I mean, at the first year it was we had Big Crit was our was our headliner that that year. Um, and and I think another thing that I p- think people are really drawn to is that. Uh, People, millennials in particular, I think we're drawn to things when they we feel like there is a, a message behind it. There is a, some impact behind it. Like right. I'm, I'd rather support something if I know they're doing something good for the community and I know they're doing something good for the greater good versus just somebody that's not doing anything. So, And it's in, it really what they're doing, not just talking about really doing it. And so I think it's important as folks are doing things, not just to do an event to do an event, but how are you doing something that, that's actually going to have an impact? You're, you're gonna, then you're really building a community that's going to that's gonna continue to build with you. That's real community because it matters. You know what I mean? Like what you're doing matters. Not only are we gonna, you know, have fun, but we're also gonna go do work and get active together. I mean, at the at the you know at the festival, a lot of folks have done our, our volunteer program together, and they've seen each other. We had a 5K last week, so they may have seen each other in other positive spaces, and they may then see them again on Saturday right. to celebrate. Mm-hmm. So, so there. And I, I, first of all, for those who are just tuning in, you are tuning in to Think 100, percent the coolest show on climate change. Um, we have in the studio with us my dear brother, uh, Daryl Perkins, who is the director of Impact and the co-founder of Broccoli City. Um, I, I just want to say this. Um, he, we mentioned Ronnie from the Green Scheme and others. Um, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little older uh, in the movement. And one of the things that I had to do back in the day was make a decision. Um, and that was now. This is actually this is now. This is no shots fired. But please don't. If I say this is rare shots, but this is just me saying it. That um. You know, I was told back then that it's more important to build stronger institutions than it is to build stronger, just have individuals. And so I say that now because I look across this table and I see Daryl here, and it's just a blessing. I mean, me and, I mean, there's so many stories. I remember a time when me and Daryl, I think we was going to make it with a flight when we went to Arkansas. Oh, man. Remember saying with Bobby Valentino? <laughs> and we, man, we know, we think that plane was going to make it. And then we got there to the school. It was us. They were nothing. It was a wild, it was a wild scene. And I mean, there's countless stories like that. And we're going to probably get to a couple of them here about, you know, for my vote. This is actually 10 years. We actually have a huge announcement coming up. Um, well, actually, I'm gonna say it now. Let me go ahead and just say that. Let me just say that, say that now with one of the things. So, this is the 10 year anniversary of uh, Respect My Vote. For those who don't know, Respect My Vote is a campaign of the Hip Hop Caucus. 
um, getting out to vote is one of the most, it is one of the most successful voting campaigns. Uh, we have, we have literally, it's award winning from our own, from our peers, like from those from, from Diddy to Russell and others. It is, it is, it has broken records as far as one day getting out to vote. It has done something amazing things from, Stopping folks from from voter for, for voter protection, um, definitely getting out. You know, making sure that people, as far as uh, returning citizens, uh, for incarcerated individuals. So that spent my vote campaign. You can go there find more about my vote dot com. But with that being said, though, is that we have always this it is the most successful voting campaign for hip hop. Period. Nothing like it. And as Daryl mentioned that, you know, Daryl was with, with, with us on one of those and Daryl actually took, we found out, long story short, you got to, we got to have some more time for the conversation, but we found out, remember, T.I. could vote. Remember that? Yeah. We, 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 so folks, the, the, the quick version is that T.I. was a spokesman, the first spoke first spokesperson for the campaign back in 2008 and a lot of folks didn't want ti a lot of folks who were you know were from organizations didn't want ti they said man how you gonna have somebody who's going to be going to prison they were like man you know this is the thing we want people who are who are who, who clearly want our community to do better nobody i'm not perfect you're not perfect and so ti wanted to be a, a part of the campaign we we called ti we said T, we said tip man we want you to, to lead this campaign and tip was like man i can't leave my house right now you know what i'm saying but, <laughs> and so we said we're gonna figure that out he actually was he was motivated we launched i never get the 9 30 club Mm-hmm. Um, he came, and then when we found out, we didn't think he could vote. That's why it's so important to know mm-hmm. legislation. And so it was a thing in Georgia where if you're not incarcerated at the time, you can vote. We were actually, I think we were like maybe in North Carolina, maybe, and we actually then took the bus, shot down to, to Georgia, and Daryl was there uh, with with Tip. Tell me tell, tell what that moment was like for you when you, because you were a part of hip-hop history down here, Daryl. That was incredible. Yeah, I, tell me tell what that felt like for you, taking T.I. to vote, thinking that he couldn't vote. No, nah, it, was, it was incredible. And even before that, I remember, um, just in terms of we called every artist that we know we had this long list of contacts and Rev just had me call everybody I'm just calling I might have made 500 phone calls nobody hitting us back and I remember Hannah Kang who was his yep. manager at that, and she called back and you know like T.I. is really interested in this and that and, and he had literally had just gotten out of jail like literally just gotten out of jail yep. and so it made so much sense and yeah so he became the spokesperson and and I remember the moment when we found out he could vote and how empowering it was for him but that that he's not obviously he's not alone in that mm-hmm. that you know there's so That's many right. brothers and sisters that have been incarcerated that don't know whether they can vote or not mm-hmm. and and there's enough people that can shift elections because I mean it's the it's obviously the major you know it's, it's, it's Virginia it's the Florida it's the Georgia it's the the major voting swing states where they have these difficult laws to get people to uh to be able to vote again that have been incarcerated so i remember we, we took the bus we shot back up to uh to atlanta it was it was cold and we went to pick them <laughs> up at his crib um and yeah, we took him to to go vote and it was just i mean it was just an amazing moment because it was actually somebody being empowered at that moment like to really empower somebody and, and be re- enfranchised was, uh, was 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 super powerful and, and so with that we are this weekend Gonna be getting out to vote in that same spirit. Um, the so my vote campaign turns ten, as I mentioned before, and we'll be on site at the festival, empowering young people by registering them to vote and ensuring that they are prepared to show up at the ballot box. So if you are going out this, if you haven't registered to vote and you are going to the fest, make sure you. D- d- I, I can't imagine better. I can't imagine nothing better to get registered to vote and have a good time at the same time. No, we definitely going to do all of that and above and, and even beyond that. It's continuing after the festival is continue to be to work together and be engaged and and, and use whatever resource we can and pushing people to to register to vote and, and get active i mean that's just it's all about getting active well daryl i know there's a buzz all across the city about the festival <laughs> but for maybe those three or four people who have not heard can you sort of just lay it down for folks uh you know who's going to be on uh and, and and what they can expect sure uh, i mean so the concept of it well i'll give you the lineup so yeah yeah we have cardi b we have migos we have miguel nipsey hustle her daniel caesar uh, Rich the Kid, Light Show from here in D.C., um, Hood Celebrity. So we have a, a, a really good lineup. I'm really excited about the lineup. But really on site is, is almost how are we creating 
a little mini broccoli city. So you have your you have your your good food options. You got your food options. You obviously have your music and entertainment. You know we have activations of folks that are doing 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 good work around in the community around the country. Mm-hmm. Um, we have one of our partners this year is Toyota Green, um, who's doing who has a, a whole campaign around their their vehicles and what their their renewable vehicles, um, and so we have just a number of folks that are uh, we're working with MLB that's that's getting folks active in different ways and 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 playing baseball and so we have we'll have so just it'll be fun. If you get information, you're going to have fun. You're going to be able to eat some good food. You're going to be able to meet good people. It just really build, you know, come together as a, as a big old 35,000 person community real quick <laughs> and meet somebody, hopefully, that you've even met before. Again, doing work, you know, whether volunteering, building a garden, doing a community cleanup, registering people to vote. You know what I mean? So hopefully, we've, we've already created those relationships and more relationships are continuing to be cre- created uh, post festival. So, Dale, I, I know, first of all, for those who know, you're listening to, I think, 100%, the coolest show on climate change. We have Daryl Perkins here from Broccoli City talking about the big festival this weekend. But more importantly, what we're we'll doing with that as far as getting out to vote this weekend, which put my vote campaign and all the other things. Tell us about some of the other community partners. I know you got us a whole gaggle of some of the community partners who will be part of this weekend's activities. For sure. So, uh, we're dreaming out loud. Um, who's doing it? We actually have an event tomorrow at, at Kelly Miller Farms, which they've uh, they built a two acre um, plot of farms that they're they're building here in D.C. Um, Casey Trees, obviously the, the caucus, um, dream, uh, the Green Scheme, and one of their programs they have called the Corner Waters, where we have young brothers and sisters that are bottling water, um, and, and they're they're using that, doing infused water, and selling that. So instead of Selling each other other things, we selling each other water, making sure to uh, and getting the government and folks to get contracts where they're getting these corner waters. Um, uh, Martha's Table, we've done partnerships. We've been working with Martha's Table and Capital Area Food Bank uh, for the past year uh, on their um, joyful food markets. Uh, we're in in schools, particularly in food deserts, in wards seven and eight. Um, we do uh, once a month. We go to schools and they're able to almost a mini farmers market where they're able to get a bag of fresh produce um, free of charge. Just and we we do cooking demonstrations, how to cook it, um, what to do with what you might do with the food. So I mean, we just uh, many many partners. All the all, all the good stuff. So so so, so I, I want to for those who are listening, I want to tell a, a, a good a funny story. Go ahead. Uh, so <laughs> I hope it's funny. No, I hope so. Too. You know, it, it is very funny. So as many of you know, uh, Daryl here. First of all, just shout out to Daryl's the many of us who have amazing parents. Shout out to Daryl's parents who are also been in this in the Bay Area who've been activists in the Bay Area. Um, and so I just want to say that's very important for those who are listening that, you know, if you, if you, if your child, your son or your daughter, you know, you can have an impact to make sure they could be activists, they could be carrying on that torch. So anyways, for those who don't know, me and, me and Daryl go way back, as you can tell, and I'm so happy to hear about Broccoli City and Greenskin. These are things that came directly out of the bosom of, of the caucus and this, uh, this flourishing, so many other things, so many other people. But with that being said, there's always been some ups and downs in the process. And what I mean, so what I mean that we have to struggle and figure things out. So, there are times when we try to get artists, as Daryl said, you don't always get artists. You don't, you don't always don't get artists to make things happen. Sometimes, it's sometimes, you know, it's not so easy because you're trying to get artists to do things and artists are busy. And so Daryl, now he has a beard now, but Daryl used to, yes, indeed. So Daryl, so Daryl, uh, uh, for those who don't know, he has a beard now. Uh, but one of the things that Daryl, when he was clean seven, used to look look a lot like John Legend, right? <laughs> so 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 what we what we would do, uh, we had a scheme. It was, it was double. We would do me. We would put me on the bus sometimes, right? And say, okay, we have nobody. At least they, we got reference. At least we got rev. And if we need to, we can turn the lights down real low <laughs> and be like, and hey, we got John Legend with us. <laughs> Sean and we, Legend, say it real fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we would actually do like John Legend is like little brother to get us hit. We would do whatever we needed to do out there by any means necessary. And shout out to TC Muhammad and then everybody else. We would, we would do whatever we had to do. So if you think that this has always been easy, try to make it. We would do whatever we got to do to get out there for our people and keep fighting and that's just one of the little funny stories there <laughs> what we had to do uh uh with daryl uh in that in that process but daryl uh they told me they want to know tell us more exactly they want to wear right i know it's sold out but tell us people where it is and any other information that people should know coming to it like you know should they bring 
water? Should they, you know, they should, they should carry bottles and you know anything like that? You want to give people information for on that? Sure, yeah. So we'll be at um, the RFK parking lots. Um, you'll see lots of folks out there. But yeah, we are sold out, and there won't be tickets at the door. Um, go to broccolicity.com. That's the handle is Broccoli City on all social media handles. Um, you can you can find us that way. We're, we're not hard to connect with. We also have uh, our, one of our volunteer app we call Chip In C H I P N, which is a really easy and fun way to get involved with different. Tell us more about what that is. So that's that's very important. Sure. So three years ago, uh, we did a campaign called The Power of One, where people were able to earn a ticket to the festival by volunteering. Super successful. We had about fifteen hundred volunteers um, come out, and we're like, "How can we continue to maintain this energy and continue to mobilize people to these community projects, to things that are going on throughout the year?" And one of you know, one of my friends is just literally a genius when it comes to, to technology and, and and an app creator, and so we created this social economy chip in based on volunteering. So basically you're able to see what's going on in your, in your area and volunteer wise, you're able to sign up for it. When you get there, you it geolocates you to make sure that you're there. You're able to check in and then you start earning chips, which basically the, you're able to use and you have an account that you can then use those chips in an online marketplace to get beats by Dre headphones and pizza, um, you know, Amazon gift cards, wow. everything, things that you just want that you might gas cards, things that you just might want and need anyways. Um, so we're just leveraging different partnerships that we have and, and folks might not have money, but they might have time and might, might still want to do things or, or have access to things. So, and also, I'm sorry, you also can get uh, access to a lot of different events as well. So it's just another way to get people involved with social economy. It's just based on, based on mobilizing and moving people to things that matter. Man, so, man, Daryl, I want to thank you for being on the show, man. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Man, you know, I love you, brother. Love you, too. Man, you know, man, I'm so proud of you. So proud of everybody, man, young people. Definitely proud of you and everybody, the whole team at Broccoli City, man. And, you know, this is a critical time for our people to stay active in our democracy, the power of voting. If definitely, one more time for the web, uh, the, the web, website for Broccoli City. BroccoliCity.com and Broccoli City across all social media handles. And definitely, if you're voting, go to respectmyvote.com where we can see the power. So Cardi B is performing for the last time uh, before she gives birth mm-hmm. uh, at Broccoli City this week. And so there's a fun fact, you know, um, last week uh, she said that, you know, FDR helped us uh, get over the depression uh, all while he was in a wheelchair. Uh, like this man was suffering from poly at the time of his presidency, and yet all he was worried about was trying to make America great, make America great again for real. Uh, he's the real make America great again, <laughs> um, because if it wasn't for him, old people wouldn't even get Social Security. Uh, shout out Cardi B on that, and I think Bernie actually, uh, uh, you know, said that she was right. So make sure and stay tuned for great music at 8 p.m. with. Uh, I think it's Jake Son and, and, and the Alternative Saints Radio. So, man, thank you, Mustafa, uh, for this amazing show. Anything you want to close out with? No, nah, just thank you, Daryl, for being here, man. Just incredible work you're doing. Shout out again to Congresswoman Barragon for the incredible work that she's doing in the hood and on the hill. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Shout out to the Congressman. Thank you. Shout out Broccoli City. Shout out Hip Hop Caucus. We are out of here. Thank you so 